What's up, YouTube? This is my review of the Kanger Subtank Mini. All right, I recently uh, purchased the Kanger Subtank Mini, uh, having been a Kanger fan for quite a while. And I don't want to say Kanger fan necessarily. It's just that in my experience, Kanger has been uh, the easiest tanks to rebuild by a long shot. And that's my big thing is rebuilding because I refuse to go spend lots of money for coils and I love organic cotton, and I refuse to go spend a lot of money for coils. So I have been using rebuilt uh, EVOD 2s for quite a long time, just for my on-the-go, everyday vape with drilled-out air holes, usually 32-gauge canthal and organic cotton, and they've been just fine. I have my dripper for at home, uh, but I really don't want to carry a dripper out uh, when I'm around, because I think people that are always uh, dripping on their vapes in public are uh, kind of a pain in the ass. Um, just get a tank, do it the right way. And uh, I only say that because I've been that dude that takes a vape and he's like, oh, let me just see, get a tank, drip. No, just get a tank, it's easy, come on. And uh, this next wave of sub-ohm tanks really caught my eye, especially the Kanger uh, sub-tank mini, which this one is. Um, and it caught my eye for one very distinct reason is that Kanger is using their new OCC organic cotton coils in the subtank line of tanks. And that means to me that they're super easy to rebuild, which is my A number one thing, because after having rebuilt thousands of uh, single coil pro tank atomizers and have gotten pretty good at it, these are actually even easier to rebuild. You can do them and you can rebuild one in about three minutes. Um, and that's the best part because they're made for a nice cotton wick, which is super easy to do, and uh, it gives a pretty, pretty good vape. Um, actually, it gives a, it gives a, an amazing vape. Yeah, a lot of vapor, a lot of vapor. Right now, I'm using the 0.5 ohm coil on the Fu Hatton clone by Americlone, which has like the funniest box I've ever seen. You gotta, you gotta see this. The, the props to Fu Hatton. Keep calm because he's made in China. I just, the sense of humor is hilarious. It's a nice copper clone. Anyway, uh, the flavor production is uh, pretty incredible on this. And I also found that uh, has a lot to do with what drip tip you're using on. The ones that condense the vapor, uh, in my mind, make more flavor. Um, and for a lot of purposes, this thing is kind of a Swiss Army knife, which I'll get into after we jump back from the close-up. Um, so there's a million reviews out here, and you can get a million close-up views of the insides. And this one already has juice in it, so I'm going to figure out what to do to show you the tank. But I will show you the tank. So let's jump to the close-up, and I can show you how this thing works. All right, it's close-up time. Um, okay, so basically here's the tank. She's a pretty tank. Uh, by the way, there's a lot of condon condon in there. Condensation. Because I just emptied the tank out. Because I'm new to reviewing. But uh, here's the tank. Uh, it has the multicolored O-rings, red on the top and bottom. And Kanger has announced that they're going to be selling uh, colored O-ring kits. Silver, black, etc. to match your mod or tank of choice. Um... Again, I apologize for how not clean this stuff is. It comes with this kind of wide drip tip. Um, I actually found it was too wide. I don't like gigantic wide tips like that. I find it mutes the flavor, so I tend to stick with my trusty Pro Tank 2 drip tip, the workhorse. Um, here's the actual base of the tank. This unscrews and put that down there and juices everywhere. These are the coils, these rectangular shaped things. It's gonna be a juicy review. Um, there's the bottom pin, you screw it in, makes contact with the actual base, sucks air in through the air holes right there, and I don't know if you can see down in there, but where's my lens? That's basically how the how the, the coils work. There's your wrap of cotton, and I probably need to redo this one, re-wick this one. I can just see the, the internet hate I'm going to get about how dirty my coils are, how dare I. And then uh, the cotton basically is inside there. Uh, held inside the coil and you stuff it up in there. Uh, one of the things I want to mention is I watched a lot of tutorials on rebuilding these online 
and um, the process is relatively easy. You just pull out the bottom pin, take out the grommet, reach up, pull the coil uh, out from the top or the bottom if you're that kind of person, and then you basically have an empty coil head. Then you just wrap your uh, coil, uh, three millimeter, that's how big the hole is. Wrap it with long legs, drop the coil in so the legs are sticking out, uh, take whatever you wrapped it around, stick it through the holes to stabilize right in the middle. Uh, positive negative clip the legs and then you should have a bare coil in there and the reviews I've seen on rewrapping the coils say you take the organic cotton twist it and then string it through and then clip it and fluff it on either end I tried that a million times and I had no luck in doing that uh, you'll notice the coils themselves come with the cotton stuffed inside now the ones that Kanger has shipped with are, are a little overwicked they're not that bad but when you rebuild them I have found and this is just my personal trial and error, of which there has been plenty, that you really need to, once you string the coil through, the wick through the coil, and you have excess cotton about yay much on, each, on either side, uh, you have to push it back into the hole and get it on either side of the wick. So you should have your coil and then kind of a billow of cotton on the inside that acts as a reserve for what is going to get vaporized because this thing uh it eats a lot of juice it rica de juice and you got to do that on both sides so if you're going to rebuild i have found it to be much more effective in avoiding dry hits uh, if you take the cotton that you clip off from the end and then with your tweezers uh shove it back in the hole on either side so you have a bunch of cotton on either side of the wick no dry hits uh since i did this and here is the base as I went over with your air holes, this has a nice clicky turny thing going on. Very easy to turn, clicks into place, air hole settings. This is if you really if you want to make fun of someone. It's it's a prank air hole. Dude, you gotta try the uh, the draw on this one. Uh dick. And no, I gotta wipe my hands off. I gotta wipe my hands off. I got juice all over. Ta-da! Um, so that's basically how the tank works. I'm gonna screw this back in. Alright, her. And then, uh, I'm gonna throw some juice in that. In that bad boy. So this is how you fill it. It's actually pretty easy to fill given that you have a very large juice capacity in here. Um, tank capacity, I think, is around 4.3 mil. It's a good capacity. It ain't bad. I'm filling it with uh, Vape Wild Raspberry Cheesecake. Oh, man. I had some pralines and cream in here, and I emptied it for you fine people for the review, and I dumped it in the Raspberry Cheesecake. Yeesh. All right, well, let's throw caution to the wind. Fill it up from there. Although I have not been very impressed with Vape Wild's juices as a whole, so I'm not sure what much of a difference it will make. Screw that back in. You can do it. There you go. Put on the tip. And screw into your mod. And annoy your friends with cloud blowing goodness. Let's get some of that. Oh, <coughs> I punked myself. <laughs> I left it on the, oh, uh, the no air, the no air hole. There we go. So let's open the box. You've probably seen this happen in other videos, but the packaging is very nice. Kanger cares. You got open this and you got this foam thing, which is a pain in my dink hole to get out. Kanger, why? Why? Uh, uh. Alright, you get that out. You have uh, the bag, which cotton came in. Whole bunch of tools, your 733rd screwdriver. You have a pre-wrapped coil, two screwdrivers. Documentation, authenticating that this is indeed made from the hands of Kanger. And inside you have a plate... Dude, you have a replacement Pyrex glass, which I, I like a lot, actually, because glass does break. Glass breaks. Then you have the RBA head in here, which I don't really think I need to use that much, because I can rebuild the coils, and it's largely the same thing. 
Thank you, KFun, for showing us the way on how to do this. Um, it's a really nice, compact RBA head. But as I said, I have been getting dry hits on this thing, and despite rebuilding many times, I'm still getting dry hits. I think the juice channel in there is relatively small. And for all the people who are going to critique this build, I was just experimenting with wick lengths. That isn't my final wick length. You guys can be so cruel. That's the RBA head. And screw that back on. And this essentially goes in the exact same place that the coil would. It's a really nice option. Once I figure out how to not dry hit it, I'll be all over that. And then here is the coil that shipped with it, which of course is no different. This is the 1.2 ohm coil, and I was using this on the iStick 20 watt, um, which hit quite nice, which hit quite nice. Now I need to wipe my hands again and put all the goodness back in the box so we can zoom back out and I can give you my wrap up on the sub tank mini. All right, you don't need to watch this. You know, I'll, I'll see you in one second. Okay, I hope you enjoyed my super close-up mode. Um, and as I was saying before I went in, this thing is kind of a Swiss Army knife in terms of what you can do with it, which is why I like it more. Uh, I didn't want to get the Atlantis, because I don't like that synthetic uh, wrapper. What the What is it made of? It's made of uh, the hair of young children. Yeah, their coils are made of the hair of young children. I don't want to vape off that. Um, the Joytech Delta II did look pretty cool, and I've heard very good things about it. Um, however, I didn't know about the rebuildability, 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 rebuildedness of their coils. Um, and that was prime in me deciding to get this one because ultimately they act the same way as the single coil atomizers. You just pop out the bottom pin, wrap your coil, stick it in, wick it, cut the clips in the tips, prime it, vape it. Easy. Um... Because just making a new wick is something of an obsession of mine. Making a new coil. I set out to make the best coils. At least ones that don't take like taste like ass every time I make them. As far as the air settings go, you have the Cyclops mode right here. Full open, which uh, produces... A really respectable cloud. I don't know if you can hear how much air is going in there, but it's quite a bit. It's quite a bit. Then you have the two-hole... Mode, mode, two holes. If it's a really wild Saturday night, you get both holes. Um, also, a lot of vapor. And I found this is actually pretty useful for mouth to lungers. Like myself, we have such odd terminology in the vape world. Are you mouth to lung? Do you go mouth to lung? Didn't they do that in the human centipede? Um, but two holes, you can go mouth to lung and get a pretty fair amount of uh, vapor at the same time. Then you have one hole. For those conservative uh, conservative folks out there, there's only one hole for me uh, in this. Very good flavor. The draw is very hot, um, which you might not like if it's only going one hole in. Uh, so for that, I'd recommend using it on a regulated mod where you can step down the wattage if you don't like the vapor to be that hot and that condensed. And my next review will be the iStick 50 watt uh, that I am eagerly, eagerly awaiting. E eager e leaf sent to me um but what's nice about this is you can kind of do everything with the three air hole settings you, you got you got definite mouth to lung wink uh uh or rather you got definite yeah mouth to lung yeah and then the two holes you got very good mouth to lung you have lung to lung uh you have lung to foot you can do great lung to foot vaping uh ear to Ear to nose, you can do a lot of ear to nose vaping with this. Um, and then of course you have the Cyclops hole, which is what you're supposed to use when you're rebooting the X-Men franchise, uh, which has plenty of air production for me. Um, I've been using the thing for about a week right now. Uh, I gotta say I'm not disappointed. Uh, I had some hiccups when I was rebuilding the coils in, in the first place, but uh, I talked about that in the close up and I'm gonna have a separate coil building tatarl because I've watched a bunch of the ones that are out there are out online and I feel like they're missing one key component so you're not you don't get dry hits up on this. Um, oh yeah, the RDA deck. Um, I talked about that in the close up. I don't use it that much uh, because it's such a similar kind of setup to the coils themselves. I don't find myself using it that much, but I will say I have not had much luck with not getting dry hits off of the RDA coil, which is something I need to investigate a little more. 
However, I'm not using it extensively, so it's not a huge priority. Um, so that's that. I'd say if you're looking for a sub ohm tank, this is definitely a uh, a really should buy. I got it for uh, what was it 38 bucks from myvapeinc.com. Shout out here in LA. Support LA businesses. Uh, shipping was prompt, uh, and they were very nice. Um, but I'm sure you can get it anywhere on the interwebs. I really got to clean these. You ever, you ever have, you look down at your drip tip and there's like all this, like, crusty skin on there? I always, I always, I always find that out when someone's like, let me hit your vape. And I'm like, here. I'm like, oh no, that's, you got, you got DNA all up in that. I got to, I got to scrape it off with my nail. Got to do the nail scrape. Um, so that's that. Uh, thank you for watching the drip tip. Uh, I'll be posting a lot more videos now that I have a convenient setup. Um, and reviewing uh, the stuff that comes out. My gear. My vape gear. Um, and buy one of these. Uh, you won't be disappointed. Adios.